What's up? This is Greg. And this is Tom Cap from the band Hell Yeah. And you are watching Fret 12. Get you some. due to Agnator amps. So we're running through the Armageddon head. You know, I'm running straight into it. It's, that's all just the head that's coming out because the only pedal I use is a wall pedal. You know, so I don't use anything, you know, distortion pedal or any of that stuff. Greg's rig is pretty simple. Um, he just uses a wireless unit and goes straight to the, uh, to the Ibanez wall pedal up here. To the Weeping Demon. I got a bunch of gaff tape on it because, you know, with getting kicked around and falling, shit breaks, just happens. And he uses as well the igniter heads and the igniter cabs. Yeah, same here. I'm using the, uh, the Armageddon heads and uh, I actually put a tube screamer in front of mine because I like to I have passive pickups. So I roll my gain back a little bit just so I can you know, get cleaner tones for certain songs and certain parts and then you know, when I get into leads and stuff like that, I'll just throw that uh, uh, tube screamer on and just give me that extra sizzle. Basically, we would both come up with riffs and try to piece, you know, different parts together with riffs that we do have. So, um, as far as recording what riffs I recorded, I have no, no fucking idea. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's... Because we kind of went back and forth on everything, you know, so... It usually just starts with a riff, whether he brings it in or if I bring it in. You know, it's the three of us, me, him, and Vince. And yeah. I kind of, Vinny does a lot of a lot of it as well. I mean, he's not like actually writing it, but he'll influence certain parts by a certain drum beat or something like that. And then uh, we've been recording very kind of unorthodox. You know, we have our studio set up in his house. So we're writing and recording as we go, like a lot of stuff mainly the drums, are the first take. He'll go back in and slice and dice here and there and maybe, you know, punch in drum parts, but we'll come in afterwards and then, you know, layer guitars and things like that. And it could be just, you know, random stuff, you know. Just regular studio stuff. There's stuff, <laughs> you know, there's parts of records where I might just be doing, like, one part and he'll come in and do three or four different guitars layering on top or vice versa, you know. It just depends on who, f who happened to be in the studio that day. You know, or that afternoon, or that night, or that morning. We kind of do combinations, you know, we, we have, you know, we usually run two or three different little amps at, at once, and then we'll, you know, just to give you that extra diversity, you know, one amp might be a little bit more chunkier than the next, or the another one might be a little bit more metal sounding, or, you know, cleaner tones, be better off You'd be surprised, you know. These little micro cubes sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, there's really no secrets, man. I'm just using the EQ that's on the amp, you know. I mean, besides, there's a there's a uh, decimator. A decimator on there. The amp that's make, makes it really cool. It's and like a gate. It's like a gate, pretty much. And then there's a mid boost, which I use. In my stuff, I just kind of crank the bass. He cranks pull, everything. Pull the treble, you know, <laughs> about, you know, crank it a little bit. And I like it more of a scoop sound, so I'll roll my, my mids back a little bit. Just so you can get that extra chunk chunk, you know, with my, our sound guy kind of has a fit with because he wants to cut through a little bit more. So they're probably back there adjusting it without my knowledge. Three different uh, tunings. Three. Yeah, there's standard, uh, A sharp, drop A sharp, and drop C. Yeah. I use 60s. I think it's 60, uh, 56, 32, 17, 15, 12, I think. Yeah, mine's, yeah. mine's really bizarre. You know, I, I go with like, you know, light bottoms, then really heavy at the top, because I like, you know, I pick really hard. So I use a 70, the bass guitar string, as my low, just because I hit, and I don't want it to pull sharp. So when you have a thicker gauge like that, it kind of maintains it. 
Builds up your fingers too, pretty good. Well, I cut my teeth playing in cover bands, you know, like every weekend, just, you know, just to make a few bucks. But in and out of bars, the same old shit, smoky bars, and you know, same old crowds and drunks, and I went through all that stuff for and years changed. and years. Nothing has changed. <laughs> nothing will ever change in the bar scene. Yeah. <laughs> so that's basically how I did it. I grew up in doing that. Awesome. I grew up uh, in a pretty musical family. My father was a bass player for a pretty popular uh, cover band back in Baltimore. And so I was kind of imprinted at a young age and listening to the Beatles and Zeppelin and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Deep Purple and Rolling Stones and stuff, and which really influenced me. And you know, at a around my teen years, I started like jamming with a lot of the local kids and you know, your first bands like everybody else and. That's kind of how I did it, man. Just I was actually playing professionally, if you want to call it professionally, making money at a fairly young age. And my first real all original band was called Have Mercy. And we were like, you know, heavily influenced by fucking bands like Slayer and Metallica. And we wore all the you know, wristbands with the night nails and shit coming out and hair was long and we were all skinny. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's it's pretty much the the classic tale, you know, just neighborhood kids and getting together, and one thing leads to another, and you know, you got a record out, and that's kind of how we all met, you know, was through touring, you know. Jimmy Page, same thing. Really? Jimmy Page, yeah. No. I mean, he wrote every great riff ever. I mean, every guitar player should be very angry with him for doing that. I mean, he wrote all the best. Well, I would slaves. say Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones. Yeah, John Paul Jones is a great. John Paul Jones did a lot of guitar. And all the Beatles too were great, other than Ringo. I mean, but they all played guitar. They all wrote. They were fantastic <coughs> writers. I mean, it's hard to pinpoint. I mean, that's probably I would say the most influential guitar players. Yeah. You know, then you know you have your current you know guys like Zach Wilde and. Dime and Steve Vai and George Lynch and Warren D. Martini, all those guys played a big part in influencing, you know. Some kind of artist, probably an artist, draw, you know, kind of, that's kind of my hobby too. But well, my other hobby is bass fishing. I love it. If I could make it, actually, I'd probably do that if I wasn't doing that. <laughs> probably make, make a career in the bass industry. I can see you doing that. Yeah, man. Laying yeah, out of a tent. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> awesome. I'd be a chef, man. I live in a tent with a case of beer. That's all day. you need, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably have my own restaurant. You know, a little, little cool burger bar somewhere. You know, or well, I thought you were going to do that anyway. I'm, I am going to do that anyway. That's, it's chef funny that you asked that. That's one of the next. That's one of the next uh, chapters of my life. But if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be already doing that. Be cooking. I love cooking. cooking. Yeah. Vinny does a lot of cooking too. And when we grill out, he likes to be, yeah, the, we all be the man behind the grill. You know. But we all do it together. Yeah, prepping. We, we cooking. Do. We all have our areas drinking. of expertise. That's about it. It's like it's you know? just as important to us as our music is our barbecues and our parties that we have. I mean, Especially when we do the big summer tours when yeah. we're outside where we try to skip catering because you never know what you're going to get. And a lot of times it's not that good anyway. Usually so. all, and all the bands look forward to our barbecues. Everybody throws yeah. in a couple bucks and we go yeah. and buy a ton of food. Just cook, 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 cook. Drink, yeah, drink, drink, drink. We've had some pretty crazy parties so far. Uh, Last night. We've toured with um, <laughs> All That Remains before, you know, with Buckchair and stuff, so we've known those guys. I've been touring with Nonpoint for 12 years, you know, since the Mudvayne days, and um, you know, it's always fun touring with the guys that you know, you know, Makes instead easy. of trying to make friends, you know, you're already out with your friends and you can barbecue and drink and just have a good time. It's a great tour. It's a great combination. It's a great night of music and kids are coming out in droves and, and uh, the energy's awesome. first started I met Josh in England when we were doing the, do the download festival and uh, he approached me and um, 
you know, I thought about because you know, for up until up until then, I was just playing Gibsons and Les Pauls and big hollow body guitars and stuff like that. And uh, you know, he sent me a guitar to test drive, and I just loved the way they felt. And they were a very artist friendly company. You know, they're very hands on, and their craftsmanship is really, you know, I love it. And uh, it's been a relationship going on now since uh, 2008, I think, and I've had a signature salt, uh, Saltero, and now I'm moving into the Dean Cadillac, which is a classic guitar style, and uh, I can probably have something new coming out uh, next NAM probably unveil it. Just today, we were I was talking to uh, a friend of ours who does a lot of graphic designs for that company, and so it's it's going to come down to you know settling on, on, a, on, a, on good finishes and stuff like that and maybe little tweaks here and there but you know with me I'm not like too flashy but you know I don't like to have a lot of bells and whistles on my guitars if anything I just like to have the next raw wood you know I, th I always find that you know finished necks kind of hamper my playability and they get you know a little sticky when you're sweating all over it. For Tom the, uh, the Dean Cadillacs that he's just digging on a lot. Great tone of these guitars. It's just a cool body style. This one we've had for a couple weeks and he just really digs it. So it's gonna be the next custom for him. He's gonna go with those. I love the silver burst on it, man. It's just a cool looking guitar. The other one that's identical to this, but it's all, all black instead of that. And then he's got his old this one's like the original Dean Saltero that he, like the first guitar he got from Dean. And he uses this one on alcohol and ass. It's all chewed up and beat up, but just kind of, you know, we stick with it. It's one of them things. And I label them all up here on the top so we know which tunings are what. So, but you know, nothing yet. We still have, I'm actually going to be meeting with a couple of the guys from Dean this weekend. And, you know, brainstorm a little bit, but it's going to be cool, man. It's going to be really nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, they do. I just, and I, you know, it came about, it came about accidentally because one of my old, my original Les Pauls, I've been playing it since I was about nine years old, and there's no finish left on it. And it just feels great. Just that raw wood, you know, just put a little lemon or orange oil on there and, you know, you keep it nice and fresh and clean and came to them with that idea and you know I think Zach Wilde does the same thing with his guitars too so it's it's really cool. Yeah he doesn't like the finish on it. I put some lemon oil on there to make it all nice and nice and slidey for him. Another cool fact with Tom is he uses a he uses a slide a lot right over here. But I don't really like a regular mic stand so I gotta put a little demon get Tommy's little demon guy on there for him. Uh, well, I just got involved with Legator Guitars. Um, they contacted me, and it's a really new company that are looking for artists, and, and so, so so far it's been good. He's got these new uh, Legator Guitars right here that we've been using. A brand new endorsement that we're working on. Just pretty, really sleek, great tone to them, awesome guitars, really cool company. This one he uses for like warm me and drink, drink, drunk and all that. I'm going to come out with my own custom line with them. They agreed to do that, so I can't wait to get that stuff done. That's still in the works. But I literally got on with them right before the tour, this tour. You know, so I got one guitar from them, <laughs> even though I have three different tunings. So I do have some of my Washburn V's out here, the custom ones from when I was with Washburn, and I'm using those too, so. I'm a big uh, Devin Townsend strap down Lads fan. And Devin Townsend project, I love that. And there's always backstage we're listening to anything from Prong Lamb to God. Lamb of God to Slayer, Metallica. Six Feet Under. Six Feet Under. Uh, uh. Surprise Sabbath Kiss. You know, just you know, it just depends. The new Van Halen. Yeah, the new Van Halen's album. pretty good. New Seven Dust Records killer too. Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple cable problems. My guitar tech likes to pat himself on the back sometimes. Said, oh yeah, I just built you a new cable today. And then it just sucks. He's like, what's that noise, you know? <laughs> and so, 
Yeah, that things like that happen. I mean, but it's I, I don't run wireless. You know, I always felt that. I mean, it works for him. He's got like real, you know, active pickups and they cut right through it. But I always felt, you know, that it impaired the true tone of my guitar. So I just go old school and still use cable, you know, and you go and, aim, and then you have pedals because I use some pedals too live and things get, you know, it's just electronics, man. Things happen, you know, so. I've had so many things happen on stage. I can't even, you know, it's usually when your guitar goes out and you, I have to miss an entire song or, you know, what, did, what happened that fan jumped on stage the other day, wasn't it? The other day, uh, the other night mm -hmm. or something. So like a, you know, like a, the thing that, you know, when he went through or whatever, that was kind of freaky. And we were all like, what the fuck's going on, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it gets a little security wild. took care of it, though, in a hurry. So that was yeah. good. But other than that, man, it's just defaults. Knock on wood. It depends on when, the beginning of the tour and the end of the tour. <laughs> you got different feelings for these people in the beginning of a tour and at the end of yeah. a tour. Uh, uh, well, Vinny's straight 100 miles an hour all the time you know we party pr pretty much every night you know sleep during the day party in the night sleep during the day um uh, bob zilla's kind of mellow dude kind of sleeps on his bunk all day and reads then turns into the shark chad gray has multiple personalities most of them are <laughs> just bitter most of them are just <laughs> boo <laughs> that's a singer dude you know but you know that's he's just he's a singer I start off good usually, and then I turn into a complete asshole by the end of the tour. Yeah, he was an asshole a couple nights ago. Because <laughs> I want to get home. I see the end of the line, I'm like, ready to go. And Greg, he, it's, he, you know, he's, 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 uh, he sleeps all day, wears the same clothes all day. and uh, I, I have brand new clothes on today. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Starts drinking about an hour before set time, doesn't stop until there's nobody left standing. <laughs> and it's, but everybody, you know what? We all get along great. We're all good friends, yeah. and uh, you know, we all love each other, man. We really do. We're, we're a good, strong bond. I mean, think about it. You know, we've all been doing this a long time, and we're six years into this already. No, it no. just flies, man. Time flies, and we're already you know, getting pressure to do another record soon. So, but we're still focusing on this one right now. On this tour, we wanted to play more of the newer stuff you know because since we've played the old stuff you know so much we got like seven new songs in the set now and I think we're playing like five old ones so it's just a matter of putting them in order and it also is a matter of how many guitar changes me and Tom want because you know, we've had a set where we had to change every two songs yeah, for an hour it's a, like seven guitar changes there was a problem with that where you know a couple of the guys in the band wanted to put a set list together and didn't really confide in us about it yeah, just really didn't consider us at all. <laughs> yeah. We got two songs set, two songs changed, two, two songs, songs changed, two songs changed, two, and it's like that's seven, down, and that's, that ices you down. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah. it does. Yeah. So we got it worked out now where it's, we only have like four, but most of it, you know, it's a lot of trial and error, man. You'd like go out and you try a set list out and see how the crowd responds, and then you see combinations of songs that create an energy. So when after, after, you know, Going through those motions, you put the songs that work together in little pieces. You know what I mean? And so it's one continu continuous flow and less guitar changes. That's a good thing, yeah. Yeah, that's our fault, though. We should have just picked a tune from the beginning and just stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's no fun. Yeah. I need my crybaby, my Dunlop 535, my tube screamer, my super chorus and a delay. And delays, I usually, I mean, my front of house sound guy throws delays on my solos and stuff like that a lot, but some things I need to hear, you know, a little bit wider stuff. Using you know, like slide guitar stuff, real, real subtle, but I need to have all those. We got the Crybaby Wire right here. Makes it sound all wide and awesome. We got the uh, Ibanez TS9 Tube Screamer for some extra distortion for solos. Super chorus is for a little, Little chorusy jazz, you got a carbon copy MXR Dunlop delay and a tuning pedal right here. Voodoo Labs uh, power control. I mean, if I didn't have them, I could still make it work, but you know, I prefer to have that. I would say a wall pedal and I would say a noise gate. Yeah. 
definitely need an oyster gate now. Those are the two most precious pedals that I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you are you both on the ISP decimator? Or, uh, I don't use it. I think because I don't because I have a, a, an NS. You know, yeah, a, too. A noise, yes, a noise yeah. suppressor, yeah. and that's that works fine for me. Yeah. I mean, he uses his uh, built-in gate, but I, I don't use mine. It's a little bit too much for me. Um, I think uh, a hell of a time was a lot of fun. I think Band of Brothers was Band cool. Band of Brothers was really yeah. cool too. Yeah, yeah. Well, hell of a time was really fun. Yeah, that was basically a barbecue. Uh, Band of Brothers was cool. I always like doing the live ones too. So was Cowboy Way was cool too. Yeah, when you do the when you do the like the, what we did with like Thank You video and Alcohol and Ass, it's kind of you know it's your live setting. You just take a bunch of different camera angles and you just make it work. You, know, you don't have a what do they call it? When they submit their ideas. Treatment. Treatment. Treatments. Uh, like treatments. <laughs> You know, treatments like, never work out. In a post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> us. Doing it yourself. I would say cool, us, man. yeah. Actually, we're probably going to use a different producer on the next record. You know, um, we have it. We have who we want. We just haven't confirmed it yet, so we really can't elaborate on it. But I like, uh, and I've worked did three records with Dave Foreman or whatever for in Mudvayne so he's one of my favorite guys awesome I like uh, I like one of the new songs we oh, have some new more and me is a lot of fun more me they're all, I mean they're all cool man I, I really enjoy playing all drink, of drink, our songs drink drink drunk yeah I like the riff I mean usually if it's in the set it's cause we love to play it I mean it's hard for me to pinpoint one favorite riff um, you know, uh, the bridge over uh, Rage Burn, is that it? Yeah, the bridge of Rage Burn is pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy riff. I always like, I always still, to this day, I love off of our first record, the song God Damn. I just think that's just awesome. So this song, it's so uncommon, you know what I mean, to throw a slide into the actual verse. You know, and I don't, I, I've really, I've never seen a metal band use slide guitar throughout the entire song, so it's cool. It's unique. No, yeah, we just man. go. We just go Old nasty, school, man. That's cool. There's yeah. no, with us, man. You're getting drums, guitars, bass, and, and vocals. You don't have any tape rolling. No, cr no crutches. In a world today where, you know, a good portion of bands are constantly running tape, backup vocals, backup guitars. To me, it just defeats the purpose of it, man. It's just kind of, it's kind of pussy. Yeah. What you hear is what you get. Get up there and play, man. I mean, Zeppelin, you know, they did it. You know, Pantera did it. All the, all the greats do. That's what gives you that respect. And you can walk off stage knowing that, man, we did, you know, we were awesome tonight. We were all, not, not, we were awesome. And so was our, we didn't have any glitches in our Pro Tool system. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> it's funny because, like, it, it, there's no real set thing. We just kind of, which one do you want to do? Like when we're actually writing the record, like if I'm feeling like a certain song, I'll be like, dude, I want this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Me. Or we'll just kind of just say, why don't you take it? You know what I mean? Or it's really, there's no formula. We just kind of go for it. We already have the loudest stage volume in my heart. The yeah, you know that. Was, that's pretty. That's pretty funny, man. Because uh, one of our buddy of ours, buddy of ours, said that our stage sound is just as loud as Motorhead's front of house sound. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I was said, like, well, really? Motorhead was the loudest on the stage or whatever. He DB'd us at like 123 or something. Yeah, on stage. On stage. And he so threshold of pain, so yeah. That's well, I wonder why I can't, I can't hear. <laughs> That's the one I can't hear. What? Yeah,